One, Mercer Island. When I was a kid, not much older than you, I was certain I'd grow up to be a writer. I had a portable typewriter. My dad bought it for me at a garage sale. And late at night, when everyone else was asleep, I'd sit in the kitchen and painstakingly type out little scenes and scraps of fiction. I liked mystery stories a lot back then. Suspense, moments of horror, surprising redemption. I hoped one day to write something about the Holocaust, but give it a happy ending. This was when I was a teenager and thought I could rewrite any script. Now I'm grown and know that very few of us get to become the people we thought we'd be when we were kids. I never did write a novel is what I'm saying, or even a decent short story, although I found other successes and pleasures in life and don't regret most of the things I haven't done. That said, I still have time, Jake, and I still like putting words down on paper. So I've decided to write a book for you with chapters, a title, maybe even an appendix of photographs. It seems like the right way to tell you everything I want you to know. And this island, my sister's guest house, the cloudy Northwest, it's all very conducive to writing. I have a comfortable chair here and a shiny new laptop, and there's so much I want to tell you. As of course you know, this island where my sister lives with her family, Mercer Island, is all pine trees and lacrosse fields and half-calf Americanos. You can see the churning waters of Lake Washington from every direction, usually iron gray, but sometimes unaccountably blue. Seattle lies a few miles to the west. I've always thought it was peaceful here and good for us, although I do miss our home in Manhattan. Remember how you used to ask if we could build a tunnel from West 74th Street to Mercer Island? And because I thought I had all the time in the world, I used to say, maybe later. This will be a wonderful place for you to do the bulk of your growing up after you've moved here for good. You'll have your cousins to hang out with and your Aunt Allie to make sure you eat your vegetables and your Uncle Bruce is one of the most senior people at Starbucks, which means that living here you'll be very nicely provided for. You'll ski at Whistler and spend Christmases in Hawaii and pass long summer weekends at the family estate in Friday Harbor. You'll learn to drive and then you'll get a car. That said, I've instructed Allison to send you to one of the public schools on the island instead of the private cloister where she sends her own kids. Public school matters to me. I want you to know how the real world lives, or at least what passes for the real world here on Mercer Island. I can't bear the idea of you growing up amid all this privilege without some awareness that there are people who grow up on free lunch. Remember, Jacob, I spent my own childhood in the Long Island duplex, my father's parents in the apartment upstairs. As I've told you a million times, as I hope you remember, my mother was the fifth daughter of a Bronx postman. My father was the only child of Hungarian immigrants who barely survived World War II. Neither one of them grew up with anything like luxury, and neither did my sister nor I. Allison and I frequently discuss issues of privilege and economy. She says it doesn't mean we have to raise our kids broke just because that's how we grew up. She thinks that insecurity about money doesn't necessarily make a person more empathetic or kind. Sometimes it just makes a person nervous her whole life. And she's right. I know she's right. But still it irks me to think you'll never understand that you are, in so many ways, so very lucky. But at least in one way, you aren't lucky at all. None of us are. And money is no compensation. There is no compensation. I'm your only parent. I'm 43 years old. I have stage 4 ovarian cancer. I have perhaps two or three years left in my life. And once I'm gone, you'll move here to Mercer Island to live with my sister Allison and her family. You can bring your hamster and all your toys. You can bring anything you want. You know this, Jake. You know that if it were up to me, I would live forever with you in my arms. This will be a strange exercise, this book, I can tell. As I type, I feel I'm writing about someone else, like this couldn't be happening to me or to us. And then there, I feel the port above my ribs, and there it is again, staggering truth. I still haven't decided how often I want you to think of me in the future, Jake, or what kind of memory I want you to be. I want to be. I mean, of course, I want you to remember me. I want you to remember that I existed and that I loved you and that generally speaking, we were pretty happy. But I don't know if I want you to remember every single specific of our life together so that your life on Mercer Island always feels like your new life, as though you're comparing it to something that came before that was somehow truer. I want this to be your true life. And I want Allison and Bruce to be like your mother and father and your cousins to be like your siblings and for you to consider yourself one of theirs. I want them to be your soft place to land. This is, I think, the best thing a family can be.